You would have been hearing a lot about the voice to parliament lately. So what is it? How might it work? And what's going to happen next? The voice would advise the Australian parliament and governments on matters relating to the social, economic and spiritual well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. It's part of a promise that the federal government campaigned on during the election to support in full the Uluru Statement from the Heart. The Uluru Statement from the Heart came out of a meeting in 2017 of hundreds of delegates from Indigenous communities all over the country. They came away with support for two things. A voice enshrined in the Constitution so Indigenous people could have their voice heard and the Makarrata Commission that would supervise treaty making and truth telling. At the Gama Festival in 2022, the Prime Minister revealed his government was going to start on the first component of the Statement from the Heart, enshrining the voice to Parliament in Australia's Constitution. Enshrining a voice in the Constitution gives the principles of respect and consultation strength and status. In order to enshrine the voice in the Constitution, there needs to be a referendum. The government says that there will be a big publicly funded education campaign, but they won't be funding the yes or the no campaign. They will be letting you make up your own minds about it. There is a political risk there that the lack of detail could inflame the no argument. A lot of that detail has been hammered out and, and reports were provided to the Morrison government. We want to uphold the constitution and recognise Indigenous people. Those details in terms of uh, the broad principles will be out there uh, for all to see. One of the main arguments against enshrining the voice is that there is no detail on what it will look like. But since the Uluru meeting, two major reports into the model and potential structure of a voice to parliament have been published. The Voice Co-Design Process Report by Professor Marcia Langton and Tom Karma has laid out the recommendations for a voice to parliament and the Prime Minister says that this will form the basis of the potential structure and what it might look like. Professor Tom Karma says that referendums should be about establishing principles, not details. And this is backed by legal experts who argue it isn't necessary for the details of how the voice will function to be debated before a referendum and that this will be determined by the parliament. What does the report recommend? The Voice Co-Design Report recommended that the National Voice have 24 members with gender balance structurally guaranteed. It proposes two members from each state, the Northern Territory, ACT and the Torres Strait Islands. Another five members would represent remote areas due to their unique needs. One member each from the Northern Territory, Western Australia, Queensland, South Australia and New South Wales. An additional member would represent the significant populations of the Torres Strait Islanders living on the mainland. Members would serve four-year terms with half the membership determined every two years. There would be a limit of two consecutive terms for each member. Two co-chairs of a different gender to another would be selected by members of The Voice every two years. The National Voice would have two permanent advisory groups one on youth and one on disability, and a small ethics council to advise on probity and governance. What wouldn't The Voice be able to do? The Voice would be an advisory body to the Australian Parliament and government. It would not be able to veto laws or policies, and the advice is not binding. It would not deliver services like Aboriginal health organisations or Aboriginal legal services, or manage any government funding. It would not do research or mediate disputes. The Voice would be able to table formal advice in Parliament and a parliamentary committee would consider that advice. But there could be no court challenges and no law could be invalidated based on this consultation. So what happens if the referendum is successful? If the referendum succeeds, the government will legislate the final details of The Voice. The legislation will be put before the Parliament and debated and it is the Parliament which will enact The Voice. It is about improving the lives and the outcomes, which are completely unacceptable. There was a five-year process in the lead-up to the Uluru Statement from the Heart, and this is a gracious request. Why can't the government just legislate the voice first? 
The whole point of the exercise is constitutional recognition. Indigenous people ask for the voice to be constitutionally enshrined in the Uluru Statement from the Heart. That way, the voice cannot be abolished by governments of the day, although it can be changed. A permanent voice allows for a continuity of advice to governments, regardless of their political persuasions, and can help guarantee that policies that work are allowed to continue. It's also a way of hearing what people on the ground really want. Elected Indigenous representatives can speak for their own communities themselves, without having to go to non-Indigenous politicians or bureaucrats. This is considered a better outcome for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, rather than having to start from scratch every time a new lot are elected. Does everyone support The Voice? Some Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are backing The Voice, while others are not. Organisations and the corporate sector are getting behind it, as well as faith leaders, and a lot of politicians are also backing The Voice, including independents. But others, such as the Nationals, including Walpuri Celtic and T Senator Jacinta Price, are not. What it is on the ground that Indigenous Australians are looking for, and it is not more division. There are Indigenous Australians who do not agree with this, who do not know what this means. The Liberals say they are still working out where they stand. And so I think the idea of feeding in the grassroots feedback and how that can influence policy is a very positive thing. I don't want to see a situation where the situation deteriorates over coming years because we've created a great big new bureaucracy. Independent Senator Lydia Thorpe is concerned the treaty will be overshadowed by the voice and its constitutional recognition will undermine First Nations sovereignty. And include sovereignty into the Australian constitution that we are sovereign, mm -hmm. all your legislation. Lawyers and constitutional experts have explained that the voice can't undermine or cede Indigenous people's sovereignty, but it is still a very prominent concern for many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. So why do people think the voice is important and what could this mean for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people? In the Yes camp, they believe that this is one way that Indigenous people can have their say on policies and laws that affect them. In the past, many, many policies and laws were made that targeted Indigenous people without their consultation or input. A painful example of this would be the laws and policies which led to the stolen generations. Many believe that the heavy-handed and top-down approach brought on by the NT intervention would never have happened if there had been an Indigenous voice to Parliament. So how hard has it been to change the constitution in the past? Well, the bar is very high. A successful referendum needs a majority of votes in a majority of states and territories. Since 1901, only eight of 19 referendums have been successful. No referendum has ever succeeded without bipartisan support. And right now, there are people on all sides of politics and the broader community, both Aboriginal and non-Indigenous, who oppose it. This is expected to be a long campaign and one that many Indigenous people fear could get ugly. It's important that we have respectful and civil discussions about something this important because it will be for every person of voting age in this country to decide.